in the early stages of my work, I, I would do multi-frame pictures. And one of the early works that I did was uh, The Good Samaritan. It was very primitive. I, I did it on, with a crayon and then scraping into the crayon. Then I approached it in 2002. I, I, did, I decided to do a serigraph based on that early work. And, and what's, what I find interesting it, and that, that I see it in other artists doing the same thing where they'll take an older work and they'll revisit it. It's like you've gone on this long journey and then you go back to look at something that you've uh, that that was close to you at an early stage, and then your all your frames of reference have changed. And so that's what I'm finding that I'm taking older drawings and reworking them and trying to bring them to a level that I at this stage in my life I could um, I could share with others. And the Good Samaritan, which I did in 2002 actually began in 1969 when, and 68. Some of the early drawings that I did, you can see how I did the multi-frame drawings. Here's the, the, the three scenes. I, I would make them as simple as I could. The, 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 um, the merchant leaving, being beaten by a bandit, and then the Good Samaritan helping him. Now, that uh, I, I did a crayon painting, and based on that crayon painting, I did a, a silk screen. It was very simple. It was just a black and white. I did a cup. I did one set where I put colors underneath, but th this was basically a black and white that I had put some uh, painted some colors on. But based on this, I decided in 2002 to do an elaborate serigraph. So this was the expansion of that drawing. And I, so you see how the form is. There's all these elaborate uh, borders, and you see how the, the imagery, it's, it's much simpler in black and white. It's more like a wood block. This is just something printed on my, a piece of mylar. In order to align and register, we print right from the press onto a sheet of mylar. Then we put the print that we're working on underneath, and then we uh, arrange our um, registration. So this is like a, a transparent, it's a gray, it's like a Payne's gray, and it's going to go over. It doesn't turn the picture gray, but what it does is it deepens the colors that are underneath it. So it's a transparent color. And then here is the, here's an, another um, color that just emphasizes all the outlining and gives us more of, of a shape. And here's the finished work. And there's a metallic ink, a golden color, printed as well. Uh, the, the dimension, it, it almost looks like it's, there's no dimension or there's no perspective, but things look far away and yet they're close. You can see everything. There's like a depth and yet it isn't. There isn't a depth. There's little figures far away. Uh, wherever it was, like in the black and white, you could see um, they were just shapes of plants. And here, with the layers and layers of greens, and the buildings are all, they're like stones, but the layering of colors creates all, uh, a dimensional quality. And I kept the same idea. There's night and day in the same picture in each of the frames. Like, this is day and then there's stars at night <laughs> in the same frame. But I, I thought it was kind of a way to, to see what I had done in the past. And the way um, that here, there's night and day at the same time. And again, here's the, the day and night. So um, then I added a, a lot more detail on the foliage, and I added more f figures. I added more figures all around. And then the border becomes more elaborate. I redrew the lettering so that it would be uh, real pristine and also uh, readable and fanciful too. So it would fit like a, like an illuminated manuscript. And so I followed the very simple story. And it's connected to my past, but I've brought it to a new level at, after 30 years.